Yo, what's up everybody? Hold on to your hat. I'm headed up the river in Charger V Mag and I'm looking for some crappie. I've been out catfishing earlier in the day on the Grand River, which is the headwaters of Hudson Lake. And you can see me catch this really nice blue catfish on another video on the Outdoors with Old Pops channel. But as I'm getting up the river, um, I am looking for some crappie that I thought were going to be in a feeder stream or a feeder creek, which they typically warm up and stay warmer than the main river channel that uh, comes uh, out of the dam there at the Grand Lake Dam. And uh, as I was heading up into that feeder stream, I looked about a mile and didn't see any shad and didn't see any crappie on any of the brush piles. I've got a bridge up there that I really like to catch crappie around this time of year. And I was catching a ton of crappie around that bridge last year. And no dice this year. There was nothing up in there. So I thought, you know what, I'll head back out into the main river channel and we'll see if we can get us some crappie out there. There was no current. They had been running current earlier in the day, but they had uh, stopped uh, generating below the dam. And I'm going to give you a tip here in a little bit about how to catch crappie in brush piles on the edges of the river channel when they stop running water. Hey, and I'm not going to pull your chain. Sometimes when you're on a river and they quit generating or they quit running water, the fishing can get ridiculously tough and the fish can get pretty tight-lipped. Hey, down there on my catfish video, uh, I ended up with a bunch of short biting fish as soon as they sh uh, shut the water off. And these crappie and white bass and everything else will do the same thing. A lot of times these fish will get a lot more active when they're generating and when they slow the water down or shut it off they become very difficult to catch but I've got my live scope working for me and I'm going to show you a few tricks here on how I was able to get that jig in those fish's mouth now first of all a lot of you guys have never used live scope and I don't expect for you to understand how this works, but this is actually, in my opinion, it is an underwater sonar, um, and you can see uh, the brush pile that I'm fishing right there. It's in about 18, 20 foot of water, and it's on the drop-off. And you can see my jig, and you can see my sinker above my crappie kicker. And a lot of times when they slow that water down, uh, those fish become pretty inactive, and they go right down and they bury themselves in that brush and I tell you what they can be really hard to get so you need to slow your presentation way down and you need to try to draw those fish out of those brush piles by hovering that bait right up on top of them and holding it dead still sometimes those fish don't really want a whole lot of movement they don't want uh, a lot of twitching and jerking going on and if you run a sinker on top of your crappie kicker you can see where your jig is. Now there's a fish that swims up there and because I have my live scope on that fish is going to swim up there and make a decision whether or not he wants to hit that bait. Now he barely touched it. I mean barely even pulled on the crappie kicker's tail and uh, of course that was a miss because he didn't inhale it and that again that's another sign of the fish just not being super aggressive. Now I want you to notice how slow I'm moving my jig. I just barely dropped it into the top of that tree and I'm trying to draw those inactive crappie up out of there. And you can see that fish is just not very aggressive. He's going to swim up there and look at that and again, he just barely pulled on it. So guys, a lot of times when you miss a fish, it's not your fault. It's a lot of times these fish did not really inhale it that deep. And when they don't inhale it, it's hard to get a hook in them. Now if you keep working at it, and you keep 
paying attention to that live scope, it's going to tell you where those fish are positioned at in that wood. And if you move around real slow, a lot of times you can find them. And uh, if you keep working on them, believe it or not, sometimes the, when the boat sets on top of that pile for 15 or 20 minutes, those fish start becoming a little bit more comfortable with that boat being up on top of them in that still water and you can coax them up out of there a little bit easier. Now here I've got a really inactive crappie laying right on the top of that log pile and you can see he's going to start to ease his way up out of there. I've got a smelly smack on my crappie kicker and when you're dealing with fish that aren't very active products like that flea fly smelly smack that adds that shad scent can really really help those fish make a decision when they're ready to feed. Now real slowly I'm bringing that up and that crappie he come right up off that pile looked at that smelled it and hit it and I wasn't able to get a hook in him. But I'm telling you you just gotta keep working and keep working and eventually you're gonna start picking them off. Hey, what a fun day on the water. I encourage you to go over there and check out that catfishing video I did in the morning and the sun setting on the beautiful Grand River in northeast Oklahoma. I'm pointing that Charger V-Mag west toward the boat ramp and I'm headed in. I tell you what, I absolutely love Oklahoma and if you have a chance to come fish here, I really hope that you uh, take advantage of it sometime. I hope these tips help you catch more fish when you're out on the water and if you enjoy the videos outdoor with old pops please share and subscribe as we have a new channel and we're trying to build our audience thanks for watching and good luck out there